Yeah, so from some of the myths in the past that, we've, that we're fighting against here are the fact that if you put water in from the outside, you're gonna steam firefighters on the inside, and we know that that is not the truth. That's not going to happen. Some people call it V-E-I-S, V-E-S, or E-V-I-S. FSRI calls it Window Initiated Search, and in this episode, we're exploring five questions. What exactly is Window Initiated Search? What steps should firefighters take? What problems should they avoid? Is it going into a window dangerous? And aren't you gonna steam the firefighter inside? We're in Metro Atlanta to find out from Cobb County's Sean Gray. He's a fierce defender of aggressive search tactics. It's a very safe and appropriate tactic. We're very successful with it. We bring civilians out of windows and down ladders all the time. got heavy fire on the second floor. Diving in with question one for Captain Sean Gray, what exactly is window initiated search? Window initiated search, many of you may know it as VES, VEIS, EVIS. The terms are all across the board different depending on the regions. And uh, we're gonna cover window initiated search as what FSRI, research based tactics, and the search study called it because it's a geographical entry point. It's window initiated search because we are going through a window and door initiated initiated search, we'll be going through a door. That's simple, we just took away all of the mnemonics to try to make it simpler so people don't have to fight over VES, VEIS, or EVIS anymore. Question number two, what steps should firefighters take in this scenario? Yeah, so the steps of what you're gonna see, we're gonna have a firefighter go up, and uh, here in Cobb County, we have a very strong search culture. We do a lot of window initiated searches. So we're gonna have a firefighter going in the window, going in to search for a victim, and then the scenario is, is that things are gonna go bad. He maybe doesn't get to the door in time. The room starts to flash over. When we got up there, we saw that there was a little bit more fire than we thought were in there. So we wanted to just hit that window, reset that thermal layer so that we could search that room and maybe move into a progression of moving and searching other rooms after that. As we know, because of research-based tactics, we're not afraid of water. We're gonna put water up in that window because we know that water makes everything better. So yes, with a firefighter inside searching for a victim, we're gonna put water through a window while they're in there to try to knock down any conditions to make things better for the victim that's inside and for the firefighter. Question number three, how can I avoid problems in this scenario? Try to flood the building with people and flood the building with water all at the same time. We're not afraid of water at all. We are gonna go in opposite of hose streams. You do wanna to try to be coordinated, making sure that a hose stream is not coming through a window uh, as somebody you're standing right in front of the window and you could get struck in the face, knock your mask off or anything like that. So we do try to coordinate with it, but other than that, in this case and scenario, we're gonna, we know that this person, things are getting bad in this room, so we're gonna make things better. It's the same thing if there was somebody trapped or if a mayday was occurring, you need to flood the building with water and get the fire knocked out and then help out that person with the mayday. Water makes everything better. Before we dive into two myths, what equipment works best for this scenario? Why do you think a smoothbore nozzle is a good choice for this tactic? I'll give you two things to think about. Reason number one is we always talk about stream checks with a fog nozzle. You don't have to do that with a smoothbore. You can focus on hose advancement. You can focus on surface cooling. The second thing to think about is handline nozzles with smoothbores operate at 50 PSI, giving you the lowest amount of reaction force possible. Fight the fire, not your nozzle. It doesn't look like much, but 260 gallons a minute will go a long way through this nozzle. You can shop for this nozzle or any nozzle that works for your department at tft.com shop. They're all there for you. Now let's ask Captain Gray about some myths that he's passionate about. First of all, entering windows. Well, a lot of people think that going through a window is very, very dangerous, right? And that VES or window initiated search is a, is a very difficult thing to do. We teach all of our people fire dynamics, closing doors, identifying flow paths, reading smoke, sizing up the building. We do search size ups and fire attack size ups. These guys are dialed in, they know exactly what they're doing. It's a very safe and appropriate tactic. We're very successful with it. We bring civilians out of windows and down ladders all the time. Once you're in the room searching around, 
Won't you steam the firefighters inside if you introduce water? Some of the myths in the past that, we've, that we're fighting against here are the fact that if you put water in from the outside, you're going to steam firefighters on the inside, and we know that that is not the truth. That's not going to happen. The only thing that's going to happen is the fire is going to go out and the firefighters are going to get wet. So Captain Gray, why is this important for departments to spend time on? We believe that this is an important thing here in Cobb because the pillars of our fire ground are search and fire attack. Those two things are very important for us. Get water on the fire and get all the victims out of the building as quickly as possible. So we want, we really focus on the details of fire attack and search. Curious to learn more about TFT nozzles? Check out the new sortable nozzle page at tft.com shop.